Welcome to the vlog. Today we're looking at our 200 year old farmhouse that we recently bought and looking over how we're renovating this. First renovation in about 200 years. Uh, if you follow this channel because of the tobacco stuff or anything like that, this video is a little different. We're going to start doing little highlights of the progress as we renovate this 200 year old tobacco farm. Uh, which is gonna take a while. We're thinking we'll probably be finished-ish. Never is probably what we're thinking. Never ever be done. But the house itself at least should be livable. We're thinking maybe February 2022. So we'll see. So really what I have is a collection of footage that I've been shooting at the house since we started the renovation. So this video is pretty much just gonna be showing you kind of the progress that we've made so far. I think we started tearing into the house, like the first board removed in, well, I could tell you, because I took a photograph. There it is, the first bit of work. Hold on, focus. I wanna work, go, focus, do your thing. Why? So that was uh, that was the first little bit of work we did, and that was July 15th. Have you ever met Miss Lindy? She's a guy with the bright red hair. So you're happy? Yeah, I just want to yeah. start it. You just want it to be done. So July 15th, 2021 was the first bit of renovation we started to do on the house. <laughs> Now, at the recording of this video, it is November 4th. We made some good progress. Go away. Well, I've made a mess. So what we're trying to do with the house is keep it as original as we possibly can, while also making it comfortable for today's living standards, which as we've learned looking at the house have changed a little bit since 1806 when the house was built. If you know what this is, uh, let me know in the comments. It's new, it's a plastic stake with a green thing on top. A very handy item to have. One of the coolest bits that we've uncovered as we were doing this house is that in the, uh, what was the kitchen, was some wallpaper from like the 1950s. And we thought, oh, that's cool, it was really pretty. We pulled that wallpaper off and we found more wallpaper, even older, from like 1920s, 1930s. It's like a fabric wallpaper and we thought, man, that's really cool. We pulled that back and below that was newspaper glued to the actual wood of the house, the old wood. And we found a date on the newspaper, and it was like 1904, I think. All right, so we've taken off more and more of this, what was the kitchen, and we found more and more cool history, more newspapers, look at that, and more uh, wallpaper, old wallpaper here, like this stuff here, which is really cool. Looks like 1903 to me. Can't tell uh, what the name of the newspaper is yet. So that newspaper went up almost exactly 100 years after the original house was built in 1806. And now we're doing the renovation almost, well, it's over, just over 100 years into the future. Biggest full renovation this house has had in 200 years, which is a little scary because we want to make it really, we want to be careful to keep it, you know, keep it nice, keep it original but also rip the thing apart, because after 200 years, it needs a little bit. I think this whole renovation, if there's one thing I've learned so far, seeing the way that the house used to be and seeing the, a glimpse at least of the lifestyle, the way people actually lived out here in the early 1800s is that people are extremely adaptable to their surroundings. 
I imagine, I don't know, because I was, I was very young in 1806, so it's hard for me to remember, but for the most part, if you don't know any difference, this, when this house was built, this was sort of a, a normal house for the day. It wasn't unheard of to live like they did, which was just two open rooms and a living space up above where they slept. Uh, I mean, people didn't really live in the houses. Like on a farm like this, everyone was outside working all day. And that was normal. People didn't really know the difference. And I, I imagine they lived just fine that way. That's how it was. They didn't see it as the way we see it today. Is like, man, that was rough living back then. I don't know how people did it. To them, that was, that was just living, I think. Which makes me realize that uh, whatever we're used to, whatever our environment is, whatever seems normal to us today, we just adapt to it. And anything outside of that normalness seems uncomfortable. For a lot of people, if you go too far luxury and nice, it becomes a little bit uncomfortable. If you go too far brr, back to the way things were, it's very uncomfortable. We like being right where our comfort zone is, what we're used to, what seems normal to us. What's normal to me might be a little bit different to you, which I think is why when we meet somebody who lives a little bit differently, a little outside of our box, it's uncomfortable for us. We don't really like it. And that can be true to the way they live, the cars they drive, the belief systems they have, their political views make us uncomfortable. Or if they're really outside of our world of comfort, it, it can make us angry and you just want to slap them upside the head. It's interesting to me. I kind of look at people now as like having a box around their head and inside that box is their comfort, their normal. And if you're outside of that box, we tend to stay clear of people like that because it's uncomfortable. So we tend to find people that live inside of our box. We tend to find other people whose normal box of comfort is consistent with ours because uh, we like to be comfortable. Creatures of comfort is what we are. So I like doing this house, I like this project because you're literally surrounded by a world that looks a lot different than ours. You can see into what the world was like for people back then, a little bit. And so this renovation represents us trying to bring that uncomfortableness back into our world of normal, our world of comfort. We're trying to reach into the past, into a world that doesn't make sense to me and bring it into a world that does. I think that's one of the things we love about, not to change the subject here, but I am, uh, travel is so important because you're forced into a world that looks different than yours. People who think different than you. And it's, uh, it can be pretty uncomfortable, but once you get used to that and that becomes normal for you, your box of normal, your box of comfort just expands, it gets bigger. You learn more from other people who do things, who think differently. I think that's really good to do. I think, maybe, I don't know, maybe it doesn't matter. You look at somebody who, uh, like we live near an Amish community, big Amish community near us out here in Tennessee. And you look at those people who live out there and I would imagine that their box of understanding is somewhat small because they're surrounded by other people who think the way that they do. And they're pretty limited on what influence they'll allow into that box of normal for them. I don't know if it's good or bad. Maybe it's a good thing. I think if things really go bad and everything shuts down, it's probably only gonna be the Amish who survive. So maybe they have it figured out. Maybe it's better to keep your box of normal, of comfort, small, rather than expanding it into something big. I don't know, what do you think? How big is your box of normal around your head and how big should it be? Yeah. Anyways, we're renovating our farmhouse and we'll keep you updated on the progress as we go along because it's quite a job. It's pretty much what we do every day until we finish it up. All consuming, very tiring. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, let me know in the comments below that you'd like to see more of our progress on the farmhouse. I'm gonna go try to warm up, it's very cold. Hey, if you like this video, or if you don't like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, yeah, even if you don't like it, you should subscribe. Hmm, yeah. Please do all the things that YouTube would like you to do by using all those buttons below, especially the thumbs up and the comments and the subscription, those are the things that YouTube likes, which means I like it because the channel grows. Thanks for watching.